How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. Hey, everybody. Happy Sunday. It is cold. It is a cold, cold Sunday. You know, the Midwest got pounded with snow. Buffalo covered in snow. Just cold here in the city. Just cold. No snow yet here. But man, a ton of professional wrestling last night. Collision. Battle of the Belts. Battle in the Valley. TNA. There was so much wrestling happening uh, on TV. We're going to talk about it. A ton of highlights. A ton of stuff was going on last night. A bunch of debuts. A bunch of really good matches. You know, this is this is the cool part about professional wrestling. You, there was nine hours of programming last night to watch. It's not even adding, you know, Friday we had Rampage and SmackDown and everything else. It is, it is a, it is a interesting time to be a professional wrestling fan. I've never, I don't think we've ever had this much access to live professional wrestling in North America or anywhere in the world. Uh, I can't think of a time where we had this many options and this many uh, avenues for talent to go. I think it's an amazing thing. We're going to run down all of that. SmackDown highlights also. AEW Collision. We're going to talk about Dynamite. The road to Royal Rumble is happening. Things are shaping up. Elimination Chamber happening in Australia. Oh, it's a lot of interesting moves for AEW as well. We're going to be talking about that. Also, an update on Mercedes Monet and where she's headed. I think you guys know where, where I believe, right? I've been told she's headed. We're going to talk about this and a whole lot more when we come back. Wrestling Observer Live on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Let's start off with the big story here, still continuing from last week. Mercedes Monet. Where does Mercedes end up? Where does Sasha end up? Uh, it, it seems like every time I, I write anything about her, it causes... Uh, people's brains to melt on the internet and I, and I don't understand why it, this is one of the most more bizarre <laughs> interactions I've ever had covering professional wrestling Sean Ross Sapp reported or stated this week that um, he was told by representatives at New Japan the reason she wasn't booked for Battle, Battle of the Valley or for Wrestling Kingdom was that she was still injured I took that as she wasn't available to do promos and build up, obviously, but interesting uh, that she wasn't there for that. But she did show up at TNA with Bailey to support Trinity. Obviously, she was having her possibly her final match in TNA, so they were going to support her there. Uh, you know, possibly going back to WWE, back to Naomi. I think that's great for her. You know, she left. She explored a little bit. She did other things. She kind of worked on her art a little bit more outside of the guidance of WWE. Now she's going to head back there. That's great. But as far as Mercedes goes, guys, uh, I'm even more certain this week that she's going to AEW. Um, you know, I, 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 I have a great difficulty with, like, just the poor engagement about this. Like, what... Who told you? How do you know? What did you see? Well, some of this stuff you can't talk about. First of all, I'm not a journalist. And I'm not going to betray the trust of a lot of people that, that I speak to. A lot of these people are my friends. Whether WBD or AEW or WWE or USA Network. If I'm told something, I'm going to report it, whatever they're comfortable with me saying. Now, the big issue this week was my, my verbiage and my word soon. What does soon mean? Listen, soon is relative. If your friend Vinny's going to prison and you tell you like, oh, when is it coming up? And they say, oh, it's like mid-March. And today's the date, you know, January 14th. I'm like, oh, that's soon. James is getting married to, to Charlotte. When's the wedding? It's in June. Wow, that's soon. Soon is relative. You know, when I don't, listen, I'm going to say one thing though. I don't expect her there next week or the following week, Okay. I don't expect it to be like today or tomorrow. I think you're going to kind of get the hint when she's coming from AEW. It's not going to be this cold thing. You're going you're gonna to be kind of uh, seeing things being eluded 
and mentioned with Mercedes. But I think that the thing about Mercedes is that, you know, she she has created a a very polarizing discussion on the internet. And you don't necessarily get that too often. You know, CM Punk, obviously, I'm not comparing anybody, right? This is not a comparison of anybody. Uh, you know, CM Punk was a big deal when he went to AEW. And it was, and people got talking. Cody going to WWE got people talking. Mercedes possibly going to AEW, you know, the, the speculation of that has gotten people talking. And it's a very polarizing following that she has. And... You know, one thing that I'm thinking about is, well, a lot of, I, I mean, I'm not getting as much, wow, I love this for her. I'm getting, how, she would never go there because the people that she has created as her fan base are WWE followers. And not, that's what they're engaged with. That's what they want. Very interesting. Very interesting. So, MG, you've seen a lot of this. What do you make of it? Um, that I, I think she's, I mean, good for her, whatever she does, because she's very smart on the internet. If you notice, she only starts posting on the internet when she's due to make a return or make yeah. an appearance. And listen, she something. knows what she's doing. When she posted that photo of Absolutely. her training in a ring with Triple H's photo in the back, you know? She she knows exactly what she's doing. She's yeah really smart. Um, and that, that actually goes with the timeline that uh that the uh, Sean uh, posted because that was when she was in negotiations with them. Yeah. And now now apparently she's uh, backed off and she's. But guys, um, what's gonna happen? What's gonna focused. happen? The Rumble comes right. It's Rumble season, right? You have set yourself selves up for such a tremendous disappointment when yes. number thirty hits and it's not her. What are you going to do? Start crying? Start booing? Your, your expectation is, is, is blinding the facts of what she does. Very similar to um, when uh, Daniel Bryan was in the Rumble in 2015. That was so, that, that, I don't even want to talk about that. I don't even want to talk about that. Is that the one where... Um, Rock which, came out. That was that was no, when Rock came but out. But was that the Rumble where he enters in, right, and he gets eliminated, and literally as he falls out, it's three, two, He's one, straight. and Shattered Dreams plays. It says um, Shattered it, Dreams on the screen, and Goldust comes been. out. That All might have I been know the is one. The crowd was booing. That was in Philadelphia. The crowd was booing. Yeah, that was terrible. The second he hit the canvas. Right. But listen, that so, that yeah. that that is more. WWE's WWE being inept and not shifting early enough. You know, they eventually did pivot, mm -hmm. but uh they they were not they didn't shift. So I said I, I think this is a very unique opportunity for AEW. Obviously, we're seeing the women's division getting built up. Deanna Perrazzo uh made her debut and she you know, fantastic female wrestler, fantastic wrestler in general. Uh, they're going to push her. Britt Baker's going to be coming back. Thunder Rosa's back. You know, the, you have a lot of these missing pieces. Uh, you know, by the time I think, you know, by the summer, and I'm not saying I think Mercedes debuts before the summer, guys. But by the summer, I think if everybody's healthy, uh, you're going to have some really great opportunities to build that division up with first-time unique matches. And that's really Sky what it comes Blue's down to. Coming up. Sky, Sky, Sky Blue's, Blue's fantastic. I got to tell you, you know, yeah. there, there's something to her. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I had a very interesting conversation about her with somebody. And, and the fact that she gets it so quickly, uh, mm -hmm. you, you've seen the change in her. You know, she, you've seen the evolution over the last couple of weeks. And every week she just improves. Julia Hart is another one for them, is improving. You know, WWE's women's division is, bar, is by far the best in North America, in my opinion. I mean, listen, we could all argue, right? Impact has a very, TNA now. It's not Impact. TNA has a really good women's division. Uh, obviously, we know what Stardom does over in Japan. But do you consider NXT part of the WWE? NXT is WWE. Yeah, NXT, NXT is a machine. Mm -hmm. You know, they they have. Yeah. You know, the fast. I talk about this all the time. It's a women's wrestling factory. Is it, what it is, is a women's wrestling factory, and they, and not not in a negative way. I think it, it, they've created. No. 
amazing talent down there. But as far as the men go, who is the guy? Who is the main? Who is the biggest name to come out of NXT? Unestablished. I can tell you who it's going to be. I can tell you who it's going to be. And it, oh. he won the North American Championship this week. Oba Femi. I don't know if you've watched this guy yet, Andrew. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, listen. Uh, they're doing something good with him. Braun Breaker is another one. Could be Braun Be Breaker, you know, in a couple of years. We, we They have some people, but I, I mean, I'm saying as of today, they have yet to create, you know, that, that you know, they, they don't have an OVW class of 2002. And that's the purpose of developmental. That's what you want, right? You want the machine and you want to hit that, you know, you, you swing and you hit that home run. And now all of a sudden you got a factory of like four or five guys that you've created. They have had great difficulty with that. Maybe because they've leaned a little bit about on uh, existing talent being there. But as far as the women go, you know, Bailey was virtually an unknown. Sasha was virtually an unknown. Becky was virtually an unknown to most WWE fans. Majority of WWE fans. And look at what they've created. The only one you would say that was naturally supposed to, you know, would have become the big name that they were was Charlotte because of, the, because of Rick. Because of his name recognition. But as far as NXT goes, they have created a, 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 a laundry list of top female talent because they didn't really have much and they were forced to do it. Now we'll see what happens. When we come back, a whole lot more. We're going to talk about AEW Collision and everything else that happened in the world of professional wrestling. I think, I think what we'll do, we'll, we'll start off with uh, SmackDown because I want to go through that. We'll go through SmackDown, and then we'll go into Battle, uh, Battle in the Valley, because I want to talk about that card. Big stuff happened there. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Let's talk about SmackDown from Friday night. You know, the, the, again, they're building, they're, they're building these missing pieces here. The show started with Grayson Waller and Cameron Grimes. Again, NXT guys, right? We were talking about in the previous segment. You know, they, they could... We don't know, you know, in a couple of years, well, we may be talking about, you know, this class that came out of the pan post pandemic era of NXT that came up. Uh, they, they've done tremendous stuff, you know, and you have world champions, multi-time champions here. Uh, there's a lot to talk about here. So let's look at this card as a whole. Grayson Waller, Cameron Grimes, Bloodline attacks Grimes on the way to the ring. The big story here was the Bloodline was looking for a partner. Paul Heyman and Nick Aldis get into an argument in the ring. Aldis makes, uh, uh, says that the bloodline will be facing AJ, LA Knight, and Orton later on. So obviously they need to find somebody. Angel Garza and Humberto Carrillo defeated Joaquin Wilde and Cruz Del Toro. You see, these are all the next generation of talent on this show. Just the next group. Bianca Belair defeated Bailey. The story was that, you know, Bailey wanted damage control to help, but they never got involved. And it's she is the odd woman out of the group. Seems like, you know, the thing that she created here is folding. And they're moving past her. And she just doesn't have, you know, the it that they need. And she was talking about in the back how, you know, her next chance is going to be at Rumble. Austin Theory, Carmelo Hayes ends in a no contest. Now, talking about uh, a, 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 the, ne the next group, Carmelo Hayes. Something very special about him. Austin Theory, another one. The ref stopped this. Look at this. This went nine minutes. The ref stopped it after a botched Spanish fly where it looked like they both landed on their heads. Austin Theory fell right on his head. If you pause that, it, it looked nasty. I think what happened when he did the flip back off the rope, I think he just went sideways a little bit and couldn't get the full rotation. It looks like maybe he slipped. Yeah, so he, something happened. Something Listen, it weird. happens. Yeah. But um, I hope they're fine. I hope everybody's okay. I don't know if he's on concussion protocol right now. He possibly could be until they evaluate him and, and see how he's doing midweek. But... um. Not good. I mean, I, that was scary, but hopefully they're fine. Main event, LA Knight, AJ Styles, Randy Orton defeated Solo and Jimmy Uso. They couldn't get a partner. This went around 12 minutes. Further telling the story. That was pretty story. much the whole, 
the whole show pretty was much this. the whole story of yeah, yeah of Paul Heyman walking around trying to find someone that yeah. didn't hate the bloodline. <laughs> Royal Rumble. Let's talk about this a little bit. Per Dave Meltzer, the title match was originally going to be Orton and Reigns, but it was changed to a four-way to avoid pinning Orton. I guess they have big plans for Orton here. Rey Mysterio is hopeful to be back in time for the Rumble. Here's the Rumble lineup so far. This is what we have. Declared to be in the Rumble. Men's Rumble. Cody Rhodes, CM Punk, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Bobby Lashley. Now, there's so much engagement I want to see happen in this rumble. Like, I want to see Shinsuke and Punk. I want to see, you know, Lashley and Punk. There, there's so many of these weird matchups we're going to see. And then, obviously, you know, a face-off between Punk and Cody. What if they're the final two? That, that would be something, right? Now, I don't know who's going to win it, whether it's Cody or Punk. Whatever happens is going to, whatever happens in this match in two weeks is going to set up the plan for the next three months, which is fantastic. And we'll see what happens. Women's Rumble, Bailey declared, Nia, Becky Lynch, Bianca Belair. You also have the undisputed title, obviously on the line. Roman Reigns defends against Randy Orton, LA Knight, and AJ Styles in a fatal four way. United States champion Logan Paul defends against Kevin Owens. Let's talk about collision here. We had a three-hour combo. Collision and battle of the belts. Battle the belts, as MG put in our notes. You got the Cope Open Challenge. Adam Copeland defeated Lee Moriarty with Shane Taylor. Dude, this was a great match. Lee looked great. After Copeland reminded everyone that he's still targeting Christian, he's still going for that title, he wants Christian, I thought this was a really good open, fun open. This show feels familiar and, tr and different. And I was trying to figure out, like, what, what is this show at this point, right? Like, you get these very unique matches, like Lee Moriarty versus Ab Adam Copeland, that are competitive and they're good matches, but at the end, you know who's winning. It's almost like a 95 Nitro. We're there like early That's 96. Exactly I, it's yeah. like early 96 Nitro before the NWO stuff happened. In, in a good way. I'm not saying it in a negative. ROH World Six-Man Tag Team Title Match. The Mogul Embassy defeated Lance Archer, the, the Righteous, which is Dutch and Vincent, with Jake Roberts. Look, Jake Roberts is on the show. Prince Nada laid out a challenge for Dynamite, the Mogul Embassy versus Bullet Club Gold for the ROH World Six-Man titles. Dustin Rose defeated Willie Mack. Like, did you ever think that match would ever happen, that combo? Not in a million years. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> this is what I mean. It, like, they're all like, Willie Mack's a good wrestler. Dustin, obviously. You know, fun to see. Hangman Page defeated J.D. Drake with Anthony Henry on, uh, on the outside. There was a really good spot. Uh... Hangman was going for the uh, the buckshot, and Anthony Henry's on the outside behind him, and he does a flip onto him, comes back on the apron, flips forward for the buckshot, and hits J.D. Drake and gets the pin. I thought that was a fun <laughs> match. You got the in-ring debut of Deanna Perrazzo defeating Red Velvet. Great finisher, though. What is it? What is what does she call this? The the uh, submission. Oh God, I can't I remember off the top of my head. I don't. I don't know it off the top of my head. Apologies. Yeah. The House of Black, Brody King, Buddy Matthews, Malachi Black, defeated Daniel Garcia and FTR. And uh, as the show was going off the air, they go to the truck, and there's a big brawl happening on the outside. I loved this, by the way. So they wrapped up great. Collision. And they went, they faded out and they faded right into Battle of the Belts. No, you know, it wasn't, it was done just seamlessly. AW World Tag Team Street Fight. Big Bill and Ricky Starks defeated Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara to retain. TBS title. Julia Hart defeated Anna J to retain. AW International title match. Orange Cassidy defeated Preston Vance to retain. So Roderick Strong and the Kingdom were ringside, and they made it very clear that Roddy is the next challenger for this. You know, if there was somebody to defeat Orange Cassidy for this title belt, 
you know, I can see Roderick Strong being that person. Seems like that's where they're going. It does really seem. You know, it, this is the worker's title, and Roddy obviously is one of the best ones there. And they've invested a lot of time in him on TV over the last, I don't know, since uh, four months, five months, right? Yes. Prior to All In. It's a long time ago. So they got it. There has to be some sort of reward, and and maybe Orange wants to take some time off and do something else. I, I I think this is a good matchup for whenever this takes place, if it's at the pay per view or not. I'm into this. Before you move on, uh, yeah, Gianna's uh, finisher move, Venus De Mayo. Venus, okay, De Mayo. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought she, I thought she did good. You know, again, this goes back to the conversation of when Mercedes comes in. You are building opponents for her. And that's something that Tony has to really consider on how you're going to book her. It's very important. Listen, we, we saw uh, the, the right way of doing it, obviously, with CM Punk and it working. And then this weird way they did it with Adam Copeland. Mm -hmm. And it didn't create the momentum. Listen, I think he's been great. At, you know, this is the reset that they're doing. It's the reset that they're doing. But he came in, you know, hot, and then it kind of fizzled, and it didn't really make it into anything else. And I, I think they need to be careful with Mercedes. They don't really have an opportunity to mess it up. You know, I think they'll give her the big treatment, obviously, and they'll set her up for success, obviously, but you're going to have to keep that momentum going. You can't just do it for, you know, one program, and then it just ends up becoming that she's, you know, in a mid-match somewhere on collision. Or dynamite. You know, I don't know which branch she ends up in. I would assume it's dynamite. You want her in front of more people than you know you can. Uh, you know, this is just leading up to everything else that's gonna go on next week. We'll, you know, obviously we'll touch on this. Oh, also, I didn't touch on this. Ed, and then because the next segment we're gonna go straight into TNA and uh uh New Japan because those were tremendous shows. So much free agency. CM Punk announced for Elimination Chamber. Did you see the poster? I haven't yet. I mean, he they, they photoshopped this man to look like Zoolander. <laughs> I don't know. It should be it shouldn't be CM, it should be PS punk, pure sexy punk. Oh my God. I, I mean, I, I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> He's, they 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 made this man look like I I'm not him. <laughs> He was dying That's when I so saw funny. it. But were he's, you he's, surprised? Yeah, I'm sorry. Were you surprised that Roman Reigns isn't on this show that they uh, announced? Um, it? Um, I mean, if CM but, Punk's on, right? CM Punk's on. Cody's yeah. going to be on. Uh, do you need Roman mm -hmm. on? Eh, not really. I mean, I mean, it goes. It, it's normal for his schedule, right? It's every couple of pay per views. So yeah, and and I makes sense. And listen, honestly, uh, I think it would have been if it was any other time and not WrestleMania season, that Dwayne match could have happened in, in at Elimination Chamber. I don't, I still don't know if it, if it is or it's not. They're teasing everybody. But I don't, I, I can't see it happening there. That's a, that's a WrestleMania match. And you want to treat it as a WrestleMania match. You don't want to give that away to, to you know, something other than WrestleMania. When we come back, we're going to be talking about New Japan Battle in the Valley. Late last night, that show. TNA, Hard to Kill, and everything else that's happening in professional wrestling. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Andrew Zarian here. Let's talk about this. TNA, Hard to Kill. TNA's back. And TNA is hard to kill. How many, over the last 20 some odd years, how many times have we heard about the demise of this company? Stronger than ever. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Moose defeated Alex Shelley to become a two-time TNA champion. Here's, here are some of the big highlights from this. You know, the, I because I want to I want to talk about Battle in the Valley, but I want to give this a little bit more a uh, little bit more time. Their set looked great, by the way. Uh, they were in the Palms Casino. About fifteen hundred people in the building. My buddy Joel Pearl from Fightful was there to cover it. He had a great time. So Moose defeats Alex Shelley, becomes a two-time TNA champion. 
After the match, Nick Nemeth, Dolph Ziggler, attacks Moose and announces that he is now in TNA. So Dolph not only, or Nick Nemeth, not only is in TNA, he's also in New Japan. Okay, you know, he's going after Dave Finley there. He's going after Moose here. Is he going to win all the titles? You know, and I think this is a great experiment for Nick Nemeth. We, we know that, you know, he had his peak in 2011, 2012 in WWE, uh, former world champion. He was a very unique star in the time that he was coming up. And unfortunately for him, there were so many restrictions. Do you remember they would talk about how unsafe he was to himself and he would sacrifice his body and he wasn't going to ever be in the main event because he wouldn't listen to them? You know, now is the time. Nick Nemeth could do whatever whatever he wants. I'm interested again. I'm right? interested again. Yeah, listen. Yeah, you, you can make the joke years, about Dolph Ziggler. The, yeah, the guy is a great wrestler. Been interested. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and this is the opportunity. There are a lot of people that leave WWE and they can't put change gears. They're they're in the WWE gear. And there are other ones, like a John Moxley, that changed gears and you know, reinvented himself. Not so much different than the Dean Ambrose character because Moxley is, I, I think his personality bleeds through everything he does a little bit more because he's a very genuine person. But, you know, like Nick Nemeth, you know what I want to see now? I, and, and I don't care if people hate me. I want to see what The Miz could do. <laughs> that would be interesting. I want the Miz and Okada. Oh, dear. Did you just throw that in the inner universe? People are coming after you now. Mike Mizanin and, and, and Okada? 60-minute draw. That's what I want. <laughs> he starts doing V-triggers. <laughs> he just he just copies the match. Uh, you know, like, there, there's a lot of these guys out there. Um, <clears throat> you know, one guy, I'm going to tell you, like, one guy, Damian Sandow, right? He comes to mind. I, I, when he left WWE, if there was the opportunity of AEW for him to go straight into, I think it would have been a very different conversation. I, I think there's a lot of these guys that either they pivot and they're able to reinvent themselves and do something tremendous, like Cody, and where he went back and now he's continuing that character or whatever he did. And there are other guys that go and they try it and they're like, yeah, not for me. Zack Ryder, another one. Matt Cardona, right? Matt Cardona has had a a renaissance since leaving WWE, and he's done way more uh, as far as, you know, just providing for the industry than he did in WWE. He was a liked character. He's still working a very similar style, but he's able to show his personality without the restrictions. So I want to see what Dolph Ziggler could do. Also, Jordan Grace defeated Trinity to win the TNA Women's Championship. Before the match. This means, right? Well, I, I think so, as, and especially since yeah. Mercedes and Bailey were in attendance watching this. So incognito, incognito, like in, in like like they look like spies. <laughs> yeah, they were in spy gear. They were hiding. Uh, before the match, however, Dana Brooke showed up in the crowd and is going by Ash by Elegance. Okay. And she looks like she she honestly looks very similar to the Tony Storm character. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Color. It does. It does. <laughs> only in color. <laughs> All right. Battle in the Valley. This show started at like 1030 Eastern. So I had to catch up on it this morning, but I very much enjoyed, enjoyed the show. Uh, Fred Rosser, Jacob Fatu and Shota Umino defeated Team Filthy. Our very own Tom Lawler. How could he do that to us? How could he lose? He defends our honor there. And he lost. Uh, this looks to lead to Team Filthy breaking up. So this is going to create a story for him here. After the match, Jungle Boy Jack Perry attacks Umino. Okay? Has a Jungle Boy beard. He looks disheveled. He takes out his AEW contract and tears it apart in the ring. He then puts on a wristband on his arm that said uh, an armband or wristband, whatever you want to call it, uh, where it says scapegoat. So he's leaning into this. You know, not a bad idea. Send him to New Japan for a little bit to do some stuff. What'd you make of that, MG? 
Uh, I I was surprised. I was like, oh my! So this is the one match I missed. This was going on. I was trying to watch both shows, and I ended up catching up on um the New Japan show. Uh, so I watched this after, and then I seen Twitter or X. Yeah, and went, oh, <laughs> what just happened? So yeah, it's interesting. So clearly they're playing into all the drama. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe he's. Tony's just giving him a timeout because they're obviously still under contract, as far as we know, right? Yeah, as far as we know. Mm -hmm. So, all right, let's see. Mascara Dorado, Volador Jr. defeated Rocky Romero Sobrano Jr. Dave Finley defeated TJP. They're building Dave Finley up. Rightfully so. Listen, they need they need new talent, Slowly and I think he's surely. always been he's always been in the project, right? He's always been that guy, Dave Finley, uh, Jay White. They're they're allowing him to uh, operate above his um, above his level right now, and I think it's going to catch up eventually. You think so? He does. He well, he does look like he's. I mean, they put, they put him in a match with uh, at Russell Kingdom with uh, Moxley and uh, was it Osprey? Yeah, yeah, it was Osprey. And yeah. he won. So, you know, they're they're trying to get him on that level. So we'll see if it works. We'll see if it works. New Japan Strong Open Weight Tag Team title match. Gorillas of, go, go, Gorillas of Destiny. El Fantasmo and Hikaleo defeated Bullet Club War Dogs. Alex Coglin and Clark Connors. New Japan Strong Women's Championship. Julia defeated Trisha Dora. You know, a lot of people thought Julia would lose. And that was going to be I telling didn't. on where she's going and when she's going. I didn't. Well, I heard the reports that she's going to be around till March, so there's time. Um, I will say this match, I thought this was a good, if you want to see what Julia is all about, this was yeah. a good match to watch. You know what? I was going to say the same thing. If you're not familiar with her work and you're just seeing her name on, on message boards and, and uh, Twitter or X, I, I think this was a good display of who she is and what she could do. She's fantastic. She really is. She's fantastic, fantastic. Uh, the speculation is she's headed to WWE, and I think that is a tremendous get for them. There was a great spot in this um, that where they started they started doing German suplexes to each other, and Trish hit Julia with a German suplex, and she no-sold it. She got right up. And then um, uh, Julia did one to her, and Trish kind of got up quick too. And then they did like three of them, and by the end of it, they were they couldn't get up anymore. And that's how that's wrestling. It's like that's wrestling. You do a move several times, and you can't, and yeah. it, it it wears you down. It was very cool. It was a very good uh, match. We also got Matt Riddle with his mas mastery mystery partner Jeff Cobb. They defeated they defeated TMDK, Bad Dude Tito, and Zack Saber Jr. So is he, so, I mean, I wonder if they're going to team these guys up for the, you know, long run. They should. They should. They're great together. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. They're great together. AW Continental, New Japan Strong, Openweight, and Ring of Honor Champion, Eddie Kingston versus Gabe Kidd went to a double count out. Did you hear Eddie Kingston's promo afterwards? I have not yet. Dude, I posted it in our group. He was so mm -hmm. good. Um. It's, it's, you know, sometimes you look at wrestling, you're like, man, what a shame, right? Uh, you know, being in the Northeast, I've seen Eddie Kingston wrestle a billion times. I've seen him wrestle in front of like 50 people. I've seen him wrestle in front of thousands. Uh, you know, growing up in the 2000s, independent wrestling, Eddie Kingston was everywhere, especially here in New York. And he was always that what if. He was always that guy mm -hmm. That he's like, oh, Eddie is great. What if he went to WWE? Because there was no other option, right? What if he went to WWE? He can never be who he is. He can never be who he is over there. You know, AEW gave him a shot, and this guy's life changed. His life, his career has changed. Not because he got better. Because he finally got exposed to a large audience that discovered him. He is remarkable. I don't, I don't care. Listen, for me, he is one of the best guys in the business. Passion in everything he does. He's also a New Yorker, so I got to support him. But he's fantastic. <laughs> uh, I thought this was fun. He got a great promo. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's all over Twitter. No, no DQ match. 
John Moxley, Shingo Takagi. John Moxley hit Shingo with a kendo stick. The kendo stick <laughs> fell apart, and he used the pieces to carve him up. <laughs> Shingo was soaked in blood. Uh, John Moxley soaked him up. This was, this was wild. Do you know what I realized during this match? I was watching this. As I was like, my gosh, Shingo is the same as John Moxley. They work a very similar style. Yeah, they're working. They yeah. Can. At least they can. And it yeah. Was, yeah. I thought it was great. This was, I mean, this was not a New Japan match uh, traditionally, but no. it, it worked for this. You know, the, this their, crowd, their North American sure. expansion for New Japan has been very interesting because they're able to put together these uh, strange matches. And smorgasbord cards, right? It's not a traditional New Japan card where everything has to follow a, a thing. They can they can go outside the box. You yeah. Know? They're doing a cage match next month. I don't know if you saw that um, in in New Japan. Uh, so <laughs> that's different. Yeah. And that's actually going to be Will Ospreay's last match. We'll yeah. get to that one in a second. Okada defeated Will Ospreay in the main event. Uh, this was, again, uh, two of the best going at it. Uh, there was a really great spot where Okada went for his drop kick, and Will turned it into a power bomb. And just really, uh, these guys are so good. Osprey, obviously, you know, big get for AEW. He's going to be there more. Uh, I think now, as of like the end of the next end of this month or next month. Um, what what day are we in? Fourteenth. So like in like twenty days or whatever. I, you know, I, I think this is the beginning of, of some of these pieces here. Listen, we also have Forbidden Door coming, and I, I, maybe we could see this again in AEW with Okada. You know, that's the moment that you bring him in. I think they're fantastic. I think Will was great. I love this match. This was everything I like about professional wrestling. Uh, Okada really is one of the greatest of all time. Will becoming one of the greatest of all time. Just a lot of fun in pro wrestling. It was a lot of fun this weekend. Ton of wrestling, ton of great wrestling. When we come back, we got a couple things we got to talk about. A few more minutes here for the final segment of the show. Hey guys, do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter at Andrew Zarian if you haven't. That's where I post all my pro wrestling news. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Wrestling Observer Live, final segment here on Sports Byline. So interesting stat here, all right? Last night's, and somebody sent me this. I wish I could give credit to the person that put this together. I have no idea who did it. Uh, I, I, by, the, by the image that I see, because it's cropped, it looks like it's on Reddit. On, it, I would assume squared circle, okay? Just based on the font that I'm looking at here. Last night's New Japan Strong Battle in the Valley, TNA Hard to Kill, AW Collision, and Battle of the Belts 9 featured 90 wrestlers from eight different promotions in 26 different matches, and it was nine hours of wrestling with 12 championship matches. 23% of the matches were women's matches. The wrestlers, it was wrestlers from AEW, TNA, New Japan, Ring of Honor, AAA, CMLL, Stardom, MLW, and even Independence. They got singles matches, street fights, triple threats, trios, four ways, no DQ, strong survivor, open challenge, number one contenders. This was a... You know, we, it doesn't really happen like this too often. But when it does, it's very unique when you have so much in one day. And that's the beauty of this. And there was one promotion missing from that list, right? WWE was the only promotion missing. Yep. But they had Friday. Guess what? They wrestled on Friday. So add Friday too. If you said this weekend, right? You would have even expanded it even more. You would have had three more hours of wrestling. It just enjoy what you enjoy. If, you, if something drives you to madness, it is not for you. Don't do that to yourself. It's unhealthy. Like what you like. Listen, I want to get into, you know what one of my things is? I want to get into new, I want to get into CMLL this year. That's what I'm going to try. If I like it, I like it. If I don't, I don't like it. Guys, we're going to be back next week with a whole lot more Wrestling Observer Live. We'll see you all next time.